Well, welcome to the 150th episode of the Emotional Balance Sheet Podcast. It's hard to believe that I started this uh, journey, if you will, almost four years ago. It was a, the first show uh, with Scott Capeller launched the first week of October of 2020. Um, and if you can recall back in those days, COVID was still a, a raging uh, crisis at the time. Uh, it has been an absolute pr pleasure to, to do the show. Um, a lot of ups and downs. A lot of times I'm, I was thinking, <laughs> is this going to make it? Uh, we've tried a lot of different, uh, forums, if you will. Uh, obviously the most popular has been having guests on that, that you guys have absolutely loved and gravitated towards, um, bringing their expert insight and advice. Um, a lot of one-on-one -on -one shows where I'm talking to you directly about life, transitions, uh, financial planning topics. Um, we've done a couple different series on college planning and, and a few more than I'm working on right now. Um, so we've tried to mix it up a little bit and and really try to listen to you, the audience. And that's what's really kept me going for nearly four years now and reaching this milestone of 150 episodes is the feedback that I get from all of you. Um, I was just at, I actually had three graduation parties this past weekend. And the talk was often about the podcast and the, sh and, and the topics we talk about. And so what I wanted to do as part of this special 150th episode is just to highlight some of the more um, meaningful conversations I've had with people and uh, not to discredit any, any, any of my guests I've had on, they've all been great. Um, but there's a handful that have been pretty special to me. These are um, some people I know and become friends with. And that's the really cool thing about this show is me reaching out to complete strangers uh, and forming relationships that, uh, you know, now I consider to be friendships. So uh, without further ado, I'd lead off with the first one, Brian Portnoy, um, and our talk about funded, funded contentment and this idea of being okay. Am I going to be okay? And Brian wrote the book, uh, The Geometry of Wealth. Um, he has become a dear friend of mine um, over the last three or four years that I've gotten to know Brian, uh, both on a personal and professional basis. But one of the things that stuck out in my conversation with Brian was that no matter the lifestyle, accent, politics, or favorite sports team, everyone I meet wants to take care of their families, remain or get healthy, be generous to others, enjoy their hobbies, and excel at work. I think that's what's the centerpiece of Brian's uh, thought or, or thesis on funded contentment. And it comes down to the biggest question of all, and am I going to be okay? And so a lot of that, that question doesn't necessarily re revolve around money to some degree. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're ultra wealthy or just getting by. So, um, in the show notes, there's going to be all the links to these former, um, uh, episodes. So I, I really encourage you to check those out. Um, kind of following up with that is Dr. Joy Leary. Uh, Joy, I actually got introduced to through Brian and Joy is a licensed psychologist and also co-founder of Shaping Wealth, an organization that I am a part of that focuses on human centric financial planning. And I'll have a whole episode on that. Um, but one of the, the interesting things that I talk to Joy about, and we have this conversation often is that most people think that they end up in a therapist office or even her office for that matter to talk about sex or money, but it's really deeper. It's underlying issues that couples are looking to hash out as to why they're there. The surface level issues are sex, money, kids, parenting, um, you name it. But when you go another level deep and another level below that, you start getting at the root cause and that's why therapy works and mental health is so important. I would say if there's two key themes to this entire show 
over the last almost four years has been one awareness and two uh, life transitions. And no one has nailed life transitions better than Bruce Feiler, who literally wrote the book, Life is in the Transitions, Mastering Change at Any Age. And during my conversation with Bruce, he really highlights the idea of um, a linear life and highlights that disruptions can happen at any age um, and their pace seems to be quickening. And he introduced this, introduces this term called life quakes to describe these massive disruptions that can last up to five years. And in Bruce's research, it's really astounding to learn that the average person goes through five of these life quakes. So we spend nearly half of our life in transition. One of my most, um, Jim, can I call you a provocative guest? Jim Sexton, a divorce attorney that writes a book, How to Stay in Love, a divorce, a divorce lawyer's guide to staying together. And um, this is, I probably have gotten more feedback in converse, and had conversations around this, around my, my conversation with Jim um, than, than any other guest. Uh, I focus a lot on working with families and parents, and obviously we all know that um, being married is has its unique journey. But then when you have kids thrown on top of it and careers, it's it's a lot to handle. And I'm very aware of this because statistically, um, spouses that have twins, triplets, or multiples have a much higher divorce rate than those that do not. And so I was fortunate to, to reach out to Jim after reading his book and after some gentle prodding, he uh, finally accepted. Um, but one, one thing I want to point out from my, with my conversation with Jim is that through his experience has led him to believe that marriages and other committed relationships fail for two fundamental reasons. The first is you don't know what you want. And second, you can't express what you want. And it's this lack of communication, Jim says, with yourself and with your partner that is the ultimate relationship killer. So I highly recommend Jim's book. Um, I highly recommend going back and listening to that episode. Uh, Scott Hanselman. I don't know what I could say about Scott. Scott's uh, conversation has been the most downloaded episode um, by far of of the four years I've had the show. And I came across Scott's work uh, back during my corporate career when I was managing big teams of people and really trying to understand how to get people to focus. And I've got this saying, or I, I probably stole it for some someone, make the main thing the main thing. And this is still something I talk about and struggle with. Um, but Scott is a programmer, coder. I think he's probably now a vice president at Microsoft. Um, but it, it's it's interesting that he's in this technical field. But I think what he's most known for, at least how I found him, are these amazing presentations that he gave um, that will be linked in, the, in our conversation on how to scale yourself. And it's not like, as, as Scott said, if you find yourself saying to yourself, I just need to work late tonight to catch up, you've got a big problem. And so I, 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 remember, I remember creating a presentation and showing uh, one of my teams that I worked with that about Scott's um, uh, position and, and tactics and tools that we could use to help not be so tied to our email or Slack channels or instant messaging or whatever it may be. And so I highly recommend uh, checking out that conversation with Scott. And uh, Scott, if you listen to this, I know I owe you a, a call to get you back on the show. Um, one of my favorite writers, who I was actually, actually shocked that I, I was able to get on, Dan Pink, who is written multiple, multiple uh, New York best time sellers. Um, 
And what I really wanted to, to, to go down the road with, with Dan on was, um, this idea of how to create success for yourself and his process of research of, of these interesting topics he's written about, um, whether it was the power of regret, um, selling yourself, like we're always in sales, um, motivation. And so Dan's story led to in this inspiring conversation about the advice that we give our kids and ourselves. And unfortunately, and I'm going to read this from, from one of my, my notes from uh, our conversation. I said, unfortunately, when we give our kids advice or try to find our own way, asking what your passion is, is not the right question we should be asking. Instead, a better question is, what do you like to do? And more important, what are you good at? And that to me was very insightful and something I've carried forward for many, many years. And often when I'm talking to younger people about college and what they should be doing with their careers, I kind of, I, I don't kind of, I point them directly in this direction that I think that the Steve Jobs famous Stanford commencement speech about follow your passion, I think is wrong. I think it misses the mark. Uh, and, and I think this conversation with Dan Pink really emphasizes that um, the, that better question is, what do you like to do? Are you good at it? And will somebody pay you for it? So um Kind of along the same lines is is um, my conversation with Brian Portnoy about funded contentment and enough. Um, I had a similar conversation with Carl Richards. Carl was the sketch guy for 10 years. He uh, had a column at the New York Times. And it's amazing how Carl can take a complicated idea, whether it's about money or life. Carl's got a... I think four kids um, as well, all different ages, actually kind of older now. Um, and he has an, he has a great podcast called 50 fires where he, his idea is like literally to sit around a fire and talk, talk about life, talk about money, the intersections, parenting relationships, um, you name it. And so we, we talk about this idea of, of enough and, you know, one thing that that Carl pointed out during our conversation was that if security exists at all, it's a feeling and not a number. So the good news from Carl's standpoint, and this is something he and I have talked about uh, over the years, is that this means that it's something that we can have control over. Um, the bad news is it means it's up to us to learn how. Um, one of my, uh, one of, one of my, my favorite people I've gotten to know over the years, uh, is Josh Brown and Josh is a wildly successful, um, CEO of a registered investment advisor firm, uh, in New York city. And they do a ton of, uh, media. They have their own podcast, the compound and friends. And I think what's, what's interesting about Josh is, how my two girls, Madison and Mac, think that he is super cool because typically uh, on weekends, I would be driving the girls to their swim meets and we would be listening to uh, Josh Brown and Mike Batnick on, on their show. And for whatever reason, they kind of gravitated to that. It's like the one podcast to listen to and I have to wait until the weekend happens to, to listen to it while we're driving to these swim meets. And so... Um, They've uh, they've got to know Josh on a very superficial level, but I was lucky to have Josh on, and we talked about a lot of different things. But the one thing that really stood out to me, and Josh is going through this life transition right now with with his oldest that will be going off to college here soon, is um this insight on parenting and how much closer the final, finalities can be for parents when they least expect it. And he wrote a really good article a few weeks ago about how his daughter was going to prom and, and the backdrop, you know, his son uh, was in the picture and I think his son's going to be a freshman um, in high school. And 
he just talked about how fast things go as parents. We, we all tell ourselves that, um, that, that was a key theme of, of three graduation parties this past weekend. Um, but it's those final moments that you don't realize they're final until some time has passed. So, um, a great, great conversation. Um, Cullen Roche is a economist and advisor as well. And he is an incredibly gifted writer. And I am, I consider myself very lucky to have formed a relationship with Colin, Cullen um, over the last several years. And I, I think that the title of our conversation was the most important financial question to ask. And, and again, with my, with my conversation with Cullen, it's really not about the numbers or the money. It's about figuring out uh, enough. And that was the most important conversation was with him was, again, trying to define you know, enough. And as Cullen put it, simply he, he put in perspective of we have our definition of enough, which would look, would it look wildly different than it currently does today? And so, uh, again, another great conversation. Um, two UCLA uh, professors that I had on fairly close together, uh, Hal Hirschfield and Casey Holmes, uh, were absolutely terrific. Um, Hal is a part of the Shaping Wealth group as well, and he had to really twist uh, uh, Casey's, Cassie's arm uh, to get on the show, but Cassie had come out with this book, um, happier hour, which was really interesting to me because as busy parents, we're all focused on, um, you know, maximizing time, maximizing efficiency. And what Cassie learned through her research was that during the day, during specific times, there's things that we do really well and don't do well. And so, reading Cassie's book was eye opening because you, you kind of find out like when's the best time to work on certain things. And so I really encourage you to read her book, happy hour, happier hour. Um, and, and cause it provides great insights on trying to figure out when you do your best work on what types of things you're working on and Hal's focus, um, great book as well, Your Future Self, How to Make Tomorrow Better Than Today. And I'll just read this quote from Hal because he puts it marvelously. Um, if we start thinking about investments of time rather than expenditures, maybe we'll start focusing on allocating time towards the things that are more closely linked to our longer-term well-being. And one aspect of our conversation that really came out um, with Hal was this, you know, we both kind of agreed to hate the idea of this term of, of life or, or work-life balance. And we got on this, this topic of harmony. And that's the word I use probably more, more often than not is harmony between relationships, between kids, between um, work. Because there's going to be times when your family needs you more than work. And there's going to be times when your work needs you more than family. And so it's never a 50-50. This idea of a teeter-totter always in balance, it just doesn't exist. So how can you focus on work when you need to be at work? And how can you focus on your family when you need to be focused on your family? And... Speaking of which, uh, Laura Vanderkam, who I've had on the show multiple times, is a really terrific writer, um, talks a lot about um, productivity, time management, and she, her most recent book, um, Tranquility by Tuesday, she lays out nine ways for us to calm the chaos and make time for what really matters. It's really a great book that goes in conjunction with uh, Cassie Holmes' book. And so one of my favorite uh, rules or these, these nine uh, items that, that Laura lays out is one 
big adventure, one little adventure. And to me, it's a reminder that even in the little things of, of life, such as a date with your significant other or your spouse or playing catch with your kids can be an adventure and create really lasting lifetime moments. And I'll wrap up with, with, uh, <laughs> with, with one of, uh, I'll call him my most interesting guest, but it's, it's really how we met. <laughs> I had heard Neil Dutta on actually Josh Brown's podcast uh, earlier this year. And it was one of the last nights on our, on our Disney cruise. And to me, Neil has a very distinct voice and uh, there's a Neil was standing in front of me in a, in a theater at, on the cruise ship. And I heard his voice and I, I'm like, Neil Dutta. And I thought I said it internally, but I said it out loud and he turned around. It's like, hi. And he sh sh extended his hand to shake my hand. And I'm like, he's like, do I know you? I'm like, no, but I know you. And so that, uh, that, that started a very interesting conversation. The, the show started, we caught up for a second after the, the show had ended um, and had a great conversation. And so anyways, Neil is an economist. That's, that's, that's how, how this whole conversation started. Um, but it was, uh, it was, it was a great conversation. And when I had Neil on, um, Neil is really good at breaking down complex economic data. And the one thing that, that, I struggle with is families that I work with and most people in general get their financial information from mainstream media. Like you're trying to take a very complex thing such as the U S economy and boil it down to a two minute segment or soundbite. You, you, you miss things. And these headline uh, news that, that really just want you to click on things can really send you down a, a spiral. So my conversation was with Neil was great because we talked a lot about how this economy of ours is a complex organism um, and why I rely on experts like Neil, bring them on the show to talk about things that I think people can really relate to. Um, and so they don't feel as overwhelmed, uh, you know, when it comes to the economy and just to be better educated. So I will list all these um, in the show notes. So, so please take a look at the show notes this week. Um, but I just kind of want to do this, do this montage of, of some of my favorite conversations over the last 150 episodes, um, which have just been, like I've said, completely amazing. And I really owe it all to you, the listeners and, and viewers now. Um, I'm not sure if you all know, but we have our um, YouTube channel up. So not only can you listen to the show, um, but you can watch it as well. And again, I would say the the two critical themes of what we focus on and talk a lot about touches either on awareness, awareness in your life, in your relationships, um, in your finances, in your in your your marriage, your kids, your parenting. And then uh, life transitions. Again, that, that conversation with Bruce, um, I took away so much from reading his book. Um, I'll probably end up taking it and developing a whole series on, on life transitions because I think that's how important it is. I think we underestimate a lot of these life quakes as Bruce calls them. Um, and I think that's a common misbelief of of what in a financial advisor does. I think there's a stereotype out there that, oh, that's just the person that manages my money, um, manages my portfolio, but it's really goes deeper than that. And I think people that know me um, and that work and the families that work with me at Tama uh, really understand that. And sometimes it's, it's hard to get that message across um, when people have this connotation of, what they believe a financial advisor does because 
you know, our industry, you know, is, is not great at letting people know that there's more out there. And just from my own perspective, you know, this concept of family office that I talk about as well, where, um, Tama is, is very different where, um, financial planning, portfolio management, tax prep and planning are all under one umbrella. But as, as I talk to new families, that's just the um, tactical side of what I do. When you look at the full picture, and thus why this is called the emotional balance sheet, is that I would say 70 to 80% of what I do is really focused, as, focused on the emotional side of financial planning, the behaviors, what we're doing as far as helping people find and define their purpose. What are their supporting objectives? And then what are the action items that we're taking to fill those gaps, to help people um, achieve their objectives, which ultimately support their purpose? And again, I can't wait to put that series together here uh, later this summer and talking about um, your purpose and how to define that. Because when I've had these conversations with people initially, um, you know, asking them, you know, what are your goals? What are your objectives? It, it, people don't know. They've never really taken the time to think about it. And so just, sh you know, shoving a white piece of paper or blank piece of paper at somebody and, and telling them to write that down doesn't necessarily work. And it's something that I've struggled, Teresa and I personally with, with, with this, I've seen it with other families. And so I've really uh, made it a mission of mine and a focal point of trying to develop new communication strategies and tools that will help people ultimately um, lay out what their purpose are. Because when you have a clearly defined purpose and objectives and you align it to your financial plan, that's when I've seen families have the ultimate success level. So with all that said, thank you. Thank you for being a part of this journey with me for the last almost four years and 150, 150 episodes. Um, there's one guest I'm still trying to get on the show, uh, which would be my wife, Teresa. Uh, episode 50 is, is when I had the, the triplets plus one on. So uh, maybe maybe I'll convince her to, to uh, have a conversation with me uh, on the show at some point down the road. But uh, thank you again for all of the support, uh, the encouragement, and listening. Please keep the feedback coming. Um, I read every email that comes in uh, regarding the show. And again, can't thank you enough. Have a great summer and make some memories.